<laughs> well, definitely. You know, I think that the first campus party that I went to was in uh, 2002, right. around that, okay. and it really was like, mind blowing. I really wanted to, to be part of a campus party, even more as a campus student. So, you know, mm -hmm. after that edition, I started uh, collaborating with them as a volunteer. So after a few editions, uh, I had a chance uh, to meet an uh, outside campus party in mm -hmm. a total different context. Uh, this person uh, wearing a t-shirt that I knew from a campus party. So when I saw him, I just uh, approached him and I was like, hey, that's a nice t-shirt. The t-shirt was uh, about a video game live. It's uh, an orchestra that uh, they perform uh, music from, uh, from songs mm -hmm. from video games. Mm -hmm. So uh, okay. they play like uh, the Legend of Zelda, Tetris, things like that, without a professional orchestra. So that's something that was very, very cool. <laughs> I mean, well, the, the thing is that in, uh, uh, back then at Campus Party, I mean, the, they give you these uh, welcome packs with right. so many goodies inside, okay. Okay. and uh, t-shirts was one of the okay. most uh, common things. But unfortunately, because there was so many people, I mean, uh, I think the biggest edition that I went to was the more than 10,000 people. I mean, the, the one that I went was in Valencia. Valencia. In Valencia, like, more than 10,000 people. And they didn't have, uh, I mean, all the t-shirts were the same uh, style. Mm. So you have this kind of luck, like a lucky draw, mm. of which kind of design. Really? Yeah, oh, so it's like when you open your goodie bag, oh. and you have the campus party t-shirt, okay. and then you have like another t-shirt from another company or wow. something cool. Okay. So maybe the one that you have is different from the one uh, of your friends. Mm. So I didn't got that t-shirt, but I saw that t-shirt. <laughs> and I was like, okay, so uh, there's only one place okay. that you can have that I got that t-shirt. That was in campus party. Okay. I was like, so <laughs> so when, when he approached him and I say he's like that's from campus party, he was surprised because mm -hmm. outside of campus party, back then it wasn't that very normal. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, okay, okay. Wow, exactly. wow. wow. So uh, we start talking about campus party, technology and then other uh, other things uh, that we like. And uh, we end up being friends, mm -hmm. uh, work colleagues, mm -hmm. we went in projects together. Wow. We travel uh, to different places uh, with a campus party also uh, to El Salvador for the Ibero-American uh, campus party edition. Mm -hmm. And uh, 10 years uh, after that, I mean, we're still friends. Wow, okay. So... I mean, <laughs> approaching him, approaching him is one, one thing, but I, I would even say that, I mean, uh, in, uh, in particular, I mean, a uh, campus party to me, it really changed my life. It was a very uh, breaking point in my career mm -hmm. that it really uh, opened a lot of uh, doors and ideas mm -hmm. and to meet very, very interesting people. I mean, uh, recently I was uh, one of the, the founders of a uh, campus party and I told her, it's like, I mean, you cannot imagine I mean, all the good things that campus party brought me mm -hmm. uh, during these uh, 18 years that I've uh, been uh, somehow involved uh, mm -hmm. with, uh, with the brand. So when I found out that uh, campus party was coming here to Asia, I was like very, very happy and excited to be able to try to bring part Some of this uh, spirit of uh, Campus Setters to, to Asia because it's a great, great event, a uh, great technology event. It's a big movement that it has been uh, all over the world uh, until now, but nothing in Asia. So that's why we were here, as in uh, trying to, to bring Campus Party to Asia for the first edition and hopefully for many, many more. I would say like uh, a little bit more boring <laughs> and also less, uh, less exciting. I mean, in Campus Party, I've made friends. I've, uh, learned a lot of things mm -hmm. and uh, also had the chance to, uh, to be uh, close to, uh, uh, to important uh, uh, people mm -hmm. like for example uh, Tim Berners-Lee, one of the inventors of the protocol of, uh, of the internet, yes. of, uh, what we know today. Right. Also had the chance uh, to be uh, interviewing as well as Steve Wozniak, mm -hmm. one of the co-founders of Apple. Mm -hmm. uh, also I met an, ast an astronaut. So uh, having the chance of uh, interviewing someone that has been uh, out uh, in a uh, space it's something like a very, very cool. And not only that, I mean, also like a, a lot of, uh, of moments that you share in Campus Party. Campus Party is like, like a marathon. I mean, uh, in Spain, it was for, for, for seven days, a whole week. Here, it's gonna be for three days, so it has to be like much, much packed. But in those three days, you need to maximize the time that you have at Campus Party. Mm. Because uh, if you spend that time, for example, sleeping, I mean, if you snooze, you lose, meaning you're gonna miss it. So you need, you need to be uh, awake as, uh, as many hours because in doing those 72 hours, there's so many things that are gonna happen. And also, the people that are gonna be surrounding you are very, very smart people. Those, those minds are featured, featured people that are creating uh, very, very interesting companies. Mm -hmm. And I've had a chance also to meet uh, like a young people back then that uh, we just share, I don't know, maybe some, uh, some, uh, some drinks or just uh, 
a nice chat, and these days are very successful people. I mean, uh, one of him, uh, of them, he has created like many, many companies uh, all over the world. The other one managed to create his own production company with special effects, uh, all with, uh, with technology. Mm -hmm. So uh, being surrounded by these uh, great, brilliant minds, like they're, they're gonna shape uh, the future, is something that to me is uh, very, very exciting. I was no sleeping. Guess this way, they have pants. Ener energy drinks, lots of coffee. <laughs> but if you spend a half day sleeping, is I mean, you're gonna miss it. Because right. back in Spain, we had one week, but here you only have three days. That's exactly. Correct. Well, I mean, uh, social media, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great tool. In fact, I opened my, uh, my Facebook account when I was in Campus Party. So, yeah. so imagine. <laughs> and it has brought to, to me a lot of, uh, of many, many good things. Mm -hmm. So I don't like when people say that social media is evil or it's just uh, I mean, washing our brains uh, every day. I mean, the social media is, is, is not the one to blame to. It's the way that we use social media. So uh, people, I mean, very, very great minds applying uh, uh, this, uh, this knowledge into evil as in creating and fabricating these uh, uh, fake news uh, pieces and show it on the internet. I mean, it's, uh, it's very, very interesting to me. I think it's uh, an amazing topic. However, it's very sad because uh, I believe that the people these days, they have lost this, uh, this will to pursue the truth behind mm -hmm. those, uh, those news. Mm -hmm. So the moment that they see this small piece of information with this uh, clickbait, uh, sensational kind of a headline, they get outraged and they just click share without actually taking a minute or maybe a few seconds to see if it's this true. It's like, should I be sharing this? So social media is not about fear. It's not, it's not about it's spreading these uh, negative uh, messages. There's many, many good things uh, to be sharing in social media. And uh, I, I want to, to believe that I work in, a, in an industry that it helps people to be better and be uh, better coordinated and organized in order to do things and change the world, not just to, to destroy it uh, as we know it. So that's why I've been doing Campus Party. I will be uh, giving this talk about uh, my points of view over the social media, fake news, and to know the difference between uh, what is uh, news, not news, fake news, satirical news, and uh, also, for example, post-truth mm -hmm. in the way that politics are, are changing this, uh, this way of communicating with, uh, with the audience mm -hmm. in a way that they say something and then they say that it's not true right. and they ignore it. Right. It's something that we need to learn how to, how to cope with mm -hmm. because if not, I mean, uh, we're not gonna be able to, um, to delete, delete ourselves mm -hmm. in this uh, society. We're, we're exposed to so much information these days that I was reading this article the other day that it says that um, I mean the world it looks like a, a lot of a, like a lot of negativity around it, but in the end it's not true. I mean if you see the evolution of the, of the last uh, 30, 40 years, the amount of people that are having studies so these days it's higher than before. I mean the economy it's uh, slightly better than uh, than before, so there's a lot of many things that they're better. But still, we have this feeling, this sensation that everything's like going bad, so wrong, it's the end of the world, the society. So we need to, to be able to, to filter that information and uh, to know that not everything is uh, as, as, as they show it to you. And that can be through traditional media, I mean, paper, uh, paper uh, TV, radio, and lately with social media. Right. Okay. Wow. What makes a campusero a campusero? I would say that it's someone that it's, uh, it's hungry, hungry for, uh, for knowledge, knowledge, information, to, to find out more about things. It has a lot of curiosity. It doesn't give up. It doesn't give up uh, pursuing this, uh, this passion. And uh, pretty much they don't care. They don't care about what people will think about themselves. So if they really love something, if they have this passion about it, they will just pursue it and just uh, go for it in order to be better. These, uh, these people, they, um, they spend a lot of their time in getting a lot of knowledge about uh, one or many specific areas, and then at some point they're able to have this, uh, this vision yeah. that they can translate into a uh, into business, into, into a job, and uh, these are the people that they are uh, they're shaping, they're shaping the, the future. And we've seen that in the campus party I mean, over the last almost two decades. Uh, these young people, that they, they might have not uh, many resources, they might be students, they might be uh, doing everything that uh, they're experimenting maybe at home in their, in their bedrooms or maybe with friends uh, for a few days. But then when they go out to, go to the real world, I mean, uh, they really create very, very innovative uh, products and concepts and they shape, they shape the future of, uh, of the world. It could be anyone. I mean, 
campus party it's a, it's a festival that anyone can fit into a, into a campus party event. It doesn't matter about which area. It could be about a creativity, innovation, maybe technology, design, arts, anything. And then also, I mean, no matter who you are, so no matter if you're a guy, a girl, if you're older, younger, I mean, no matter about race, religion, I mean, where you're from, I mean, in the end, I mean, the connector of every campus center is about this passion. Right. So when you meet these people and they, in the same venue, in the same place, for one, two, three, four days, I mean, you're people that they're mind like that here, so you can share, you can speak the same language. Mm -hmm. So having that opportunity, it's it's amazing to me because uh, there's, there's no judgment, there's no prejudice. You just be there and just talk about what you love, mm -hmm. this passion. So that's why it's like, campus party, it's only three days and you need to make the most out of it. Yeah. Because if you just spend the time just uh, playing video games or something, uh, something different, I mean, you don't have a chance to interact with these people. One of the things that, that, that I remember most about a campus party, it's, uh, it's uh, not one, but many occasions, that uh, myself with my, not laptop, I mean, the big computer back then, I mean, I had a problem, a challenge, and I didn't know how to fix it. So I remember just standing up and just shouting, it's like, does anyone know how to do this, how to fix it? And just someone just took the bag and said, like, I know. I said, okay, man, I'll treat you with a soft drink, you help me with that. I was spending like 10, 15, 20 minutes, I don't know this person from anything before, and he or she is teaching me how to fix this. And then I was like, thank you very much, let's go have a, have a, have a drink, and then I, I can tell him something about uh, what I do, and then we can share this knowledge. I mean, people approaching me, I say, hey, he's like, do you know how to make a video? I mean, do you know how to make this? And I'm like, yeah, sure, he's like, I mean, can I help you? So this this sharing, I mean, you know what they say in social media, sharing is caring. So, so uh, Campus Party, it's about that. As in sharing your knowledge with other people. I mean, I remember that uh, in addition to Spain, there was like uh, organized workshops, and then people that just attended to those workshops. But then in uh, El Salvador, I mean, it was funny because uh, we had those workshops, but then people, they organized their own workshops, I mean, parallel to Campus Party, because there were like that many topics that they want to cover, that the agenda, even though that it was very comprehensive, it didn't cover every single topic. So you can see a bunch of people, like maybe 10, 10 guys, just sitting on the floor, just talking, about what they really want to, uh, to talk about. Programming, robotics, I mean, anything. So it's like, a, if they don't find exactly what they're looking for, then they just create it. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's one of the, of the coolest things that, I, that I've seen in Canvas Party, is like people willing to share the knowledge. Yes, it's, it's basically a lot of people that they have the same uh, mindset, the same interests and skills, but they're spread out, let's say, all over the world. And then during a few days, they have the chance to meet all together in one place. So it's like, like, like a big event, it's like, like a music festival, but about technology, about yeah. arts. And people, when they're there, they want to make the most out of it. They don't want to go to the camping area and just sleep. It's like, there's only three days, so I need to make the most of it. So they really uh, try to, uh, to maximize this, uh, this moment, this, this opportunity. <laughs> it is. You know, that's, that's, that's a very good definition because uh, when Canvas Party started, I mean, social media didn't exist. It was like an MSN messenger, mm -hmm. many friends at the very beginning, but it didn't exist. So Canvas Party was a, a, at that moment, at the very beginning, a way, a moment for people that they know each other for the whole year, that they've been uh, interacting together uh, through maybe IRC chats or maybe playing online video games. They have developed this relationship, but online and they wanted to de-virtualize. Mm. So what do they do? It's like, okay, so let's meet all together I mean, during this week, at this location, and let's, uh, let's go. So uh, when they go to campus party, they also keep playing video games, but then they have a the chance to play video games against one to each other. They see their faces, and when they win, they shout, and when they, when, they, when they lose it, they get mad, and then after that, they can stop, and they can go for lunch together, and then they have some drinks, and this and that. So sharing that, you know, the face-to-face -face at a level, it's amazing. So that was before social media. Yeah. Now when social media came, it just made it like, even more easier. They said to me, these people that follow up with their lives. Yeah. Well, not, not <laughs> the Facebook Live, but it's, it's true because uh, when, um, when I registered on Facebook, uh, it was in uh, 2008, right. and I remember it was the very last day of campus party. I mean, it was like uh, one hour before they switched off the internet. So everybody was just, like, just downloading the latest things. Oh. It's like, okay, we need to finish in less than an hour. And it's always a very sad moment because uh, 
you know that you need to pack and leave, and there's a friend that you've seen only once a year, and uh, you're going to see them again until next edition. And I remember saying, okay, so it's going to be a long year. And then someone say, hey, it's like, I mean, have you heard about Facebook? I was like, oh, yeah, I mean, what, what, what's that about? Oh, it's this online website that you can share information about yourself. And I was like, oh, okay, that sounds interesting. It's like, maybe I'm going to create a, an account. So I created my account on the last day of Campus Party, and then I started adding. I mean, all the people that I, that, that, I, that I knew back from campus party. So my first 30, 50 friends on Facebook were all campus heroes. They were like, okay, so what is your name? Are you on Facebook? Yes, I'm gonna switch for you. I'm gonna add you on, friend on Facebook. So Facebook was like the continuation right, right. of that offline. It's an extension, an extension of what you yeah. did at campus party. Mm -hmm. Great. Great insights. Thank you so much, Amado.